the Black Death, also known as the Black Plague, the Bubonic Plague or the Pestilence, was a plague which manifested itself in Europe in the 14th century, between the year 1346 and 1353. The bacteria, called Yersinia pestis, caused the plague and was most likely carried by fleas living on the rats that traveled on merchant ships from Central or East Asia to Italy and then eventually spread further throughout Europe. It is known as the worst pandemic in human history and wiped out a big part of the European population. Given this state of record keeping, historians were never able to tell the exact numbers of how many people died, but it is estimated to have been in the millions. So, what I want to explore in this video is the state of entertainment during the plague. Because I think creative works which are created during a certain period can tell us a lot about how people experienced that time. A few of these creators were famous writers, philosophers and rulers. I will talk about some examples which discuss the Black Death and are generally recognized as some of the best works of their era. One of these individuals was Geoffrey Chaucer. He was an English poet and author. He is widely seen as the father of English literature. His best known work is the Canterbury Tales, which he wrote between the year 1378 and 1400. Chaucer experienced this devastating plague in England during his young life and survived the Black Death's peak. His parents inherited land and money from family members who died of the plague. Chaucer used his life experience surrounding the Black Plague. It contains 24 stories, from which some of the parts show a clear image of how society, both poor and rich, lived during those terrible times of sickness and death. But, despite those circumstances, he also managed to include a lot of positivity in the stories, and it is widely considered to be one of the first major works in literature written in English. Another great work, created during or shortly after the Black Death, was a book called The Decameron by an Italian poet, author and Renaissance humanist named Giovanni Boccaccio. The Black Plague inspired him to write a book which was completed in the year 1353. The book is a collection of 100 short stories integrated into one bigger story. In the book, Seven young women and three men flee from the city of Florence for two weeks to avoid the plague to a deserted villa in the countryside of Italy. Each of the men and women tell a story every day to pass the time. Stories which contain life lessons about love, courage and tragedy. Despite it being a work of fiction, it does provide us with important information about that time and gives us insight in how people change their moral behavior during times of crisis. The Decameron is considered an early Italian classical masterpiece. Some historians believe that Boccaccio and Chaucer knew each other, but that has never been confirmed. The plague also had great influence on European folklore. In Northern Europe, it actually became personified and folklorized. The plague was depicted as an old bent woman, covered and hooded in black, carrying a broom and a rake. The Norwegians told that if she used a rake, some of the population might survive, escaping through the teeth of the rake. If she on the other hand used a broom, then the entire population was doomed. The plague hag, or pesta, were vividly drawn by the painter Theodor Kittelsen. During and after the Black Death, women benefited from the growing importance of vernacular literature, because a broader cultural forum became available to them, which had previously been restricted to men by the Latin Church. For example, in France, Christine de Pisan, who was born in the year 1364, became the first woman in Europe to support herself by writing. She wrote in many different literary forms, such as an autobiography and books of moral advice for men and women, as well as poetry on a wide range of topics. In her treatise, named A Letter to the God of Love, she responded to Jean de Meun's anti-feminist writings found in his conclusion of Romance of the Rose. 
Her treaties marked the first instance in European history where a woman was able to respond to such diatribes in writing. It also led to a debate among the Meun and Pisan sympathizers, which lasted until the 16th century. Hard times like this tend to unify people and create historic opportunities for change. It exposes both the weaknesses and the strengths in our systems and allows us to seriously reevaluate how things work. These works that were created by people who experienced the plague had without a doubt some common themes, like the mortality of mankind, getting through hardships together and refocusing on what is actually important. In the next episode of this series, I will cover entertainment during the 17th century plagues. So, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully until next time. Bye!